Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm collaborating with Sierra from Sierra T Designs to share some projects that we created with supplies that we sent each other from Simon Says Stamp. We both purchased the mystery box back at the end of November and there were a few things that we decided to trade. So here's the package that she sent to me with all of the goodies that I got. And of course I sent her a package as well. And you'll be able to see that on her video. But this first stamp set here is the Memory Box Stamp Timber stamp set called True Friend. It's got those uh, beautiful daisies along with some great friendship sentiments. The next item was the Daisy Stem Die. And now here's this Magnolia Background Stamp that's really beautiful. And then there's this cute winter themed stamp set called Snow Much that's got these adorable penguins and snowmen and this cute little igloo along with some great snowy sentiments. And then this next stamp set is called Garden Greetings. It's got lots of different sentiments for different occasions and some great floral images like this wreath and the swag. Lots of different things you could do with this stamp set. And then the last stamp set that I got is called Caribbean Sea and this is by Studio Light. It's got these adorable pirate themed images like this whale with the pirate hat and the little parrots and the treasure chest. And then she also sent me this awesome mini slimline full panel shaker card. Um, I'm not going to read the card but I will show you the beautiful card. It's uh, It says Merry Christmas and uh, the full panel. I haven't made one of those yet. That is on my to-do list. But isn't this beautiful? It's got a bunch of sequins and glitter and the snowflake on the front and I just absolutely love it. Thank you so much Sierra. So before we get started, I wanted to mention that we are both doing giveaways on our channels. I'll be giving away this awesome bundle of crafty goodies that includes 10 stamp sets. Some are new and some are gently used. It also includes a 6x6 paper pad, some pink embellishments, a stencil, an embossing folder, a tag die, and a set of Tombow alcohol-based markers. So I'll share how to enter to win this bag of goodies here in a little bit, but let's go ahead and get started. Now for my project, I made a one layer card and I decided to go with the memory box stamp timber stamp set called True Friend that I showed you first. And I'm also using some Simon Says Stamp inks in blush, sunbeam, and ocean, along with these thin rectangle frame dies. I'm using the second and third largest size, but you really could use any stack dies in any shape. And for the card base, I'm taking a sheet of this Bristol Smooth card base that I've cut down to be eight and a half by five and a half inches. And I'm gonna use my scoreboard and score this in the middle at four and a quarter inches. Now I like to line up the edges of the card base in the corner of my board to make sure that they line up exactly. And then I'll burnish the edge with my scoring tool. Now here I have this masking paper from Simon Says Stamp that I've trimmed down a little bit, but I've had this masking paper for a while and it's pretty sticky. So I'm going to run my hand over the sticky part to help remove some of it so it doesn't stick to my project. So now I've turned it back over and I'm placing the two dies on top, making sure to line them up properly so that my frame is even. And I'm going to tack the dies down with some mint tape so that I can run this through my die cutting machine. Now that I've run these through my Spellbinders die cutting machine, I have a lot of these frame pieces cut out of this masking paper. Because these cut a thin frame, there's a couple of different options I could do here. These thin, thin frame pieces would be good to use if I wanted to color the entire background and leave a thin white frame, but I want to do the opposite. I want my frame to be a little bit bigger and I want it to be colorful, leaving the rest of my card white. There's this one little part on this one that didn't cut all the way through, so I'm just going to finish cutting with my spring assist scissors. But I really could have used nesting dies here instead of these thin frame dies. But this, I noticed that I didn't get it exactly straight, so I'm going to end up using the inner rectangle, this piece here. And uh, you'll see what I do here in just a second, but um, I will be able to use these thin frame masks later on another card. So I'm going to use my T ruler and my glass mat that has measurements on it to help me line it up in the center of my card. And I did use the thin frame that's just slightly bigger to leave on my card base while I remove the adhesive backing so that I can make sure that I stick this in the right spot. Now 
Now I did try to use the larger of the two thin frames to place around that inner rectangle piece, but I really struggled with getting it lined up correctly, so I just decided not to use it. I ended up using the big piece of masking paper to mask off the rest of the card so that it's about a 3 8 of an inch frame that's left showing and this is what I'm going to be adding the ink to. So there's a little bit of card base still showing on the far left so I covered that up with cement tape and I'm going to start with the blush color and I'm using my new blending brushes that I store in that handy storage tool holder by Simon Says Stamp. Um, but I'm going to start by applying quite a bit of ink on my brush and then I'm putting it on the, on the masked part of the rectangle piece first and then I'm blending it toward the exposed frame. So by starting on the masking paper it will help prevent getting ink blotches and it won't go on too heavy. And then after applying the blush color I use the sunshine yellow color next. And here again I'm starting on the masking paper and then blending toward the frame. And I'm overlapping the blush color slightly so that it will give me an orange color in between. And I am working at a diagonal. So next I'm using the ocean color, applying it the same way, blending upward slightly into the yellow to give me the green shade. And uh, trying not to, you know, make it too thick, starting on the masking paper, blending outward. And then after this ocean blue color, I'll be coming back in with the blush color, the pink color again, and I'll be overlapping that slightly into the blue to give me a purple shade and making sure that I've covered every part of the exposed frame. And then after I finish this, I just came back in with the other colors a little more to make it blend a little better. And now for my favorite part, which is the reveal. So I removed the outer mask and then I had to use my tweezers to help to peel off the inner rectangle mask. Um, and once I finally got this off, the results I think turned out really pretty. I think this is just beautiful. I love the rainbow. So now I'm taking my heat gun, but I'm not completely drying the ink because I plan on heat embossing on top. But I accidentally got a little bit of the blue on the outer edge, so I'm using my sand eraser to try to buff that out. Next, I'm placing the card base directly on the stamping platform, and I'm using the large daisy image from that True Friend stamp set. And since it's brand new, I tried to remove some of the stickiness from the stamp by running my fingers across it. And I'm placing it in the center of the frame, and I'm also adding the sentiment that says Hello Friend to the bottom right hand corner. And to stamp this out, I'm using some Ranger Archival ink in jet black because I'll be embossing this. This type of ink stays wet a little longer than some of the other inks, so I'll be able to add some clear embossing powder on top to make my image shiny. But first I applied some anti-static powder across the middle, and then I inked up my stamp, and I'm applying some pressure with my Air Hockey Table Pusher that has the felt on the bottom. This works great. And then I just apply a few more coats just to make sure that my image is evenly stamped and it's a really bold black. But while I do this, I'll tell you what you need to do to enter the giveaway. First, you wanna make sure you're a subscriber to my channel and comment on this video. And this giveaway is for commenters in the USA or Canada due to the shipping costs being higher to send to other continents. But that's all you need to do to enter. So before this dries, I am getting all of my materials together in order to add the clear embossing powder on top. Now originally I was just going to emboss the flower, but then I discovered that the colorful inked border was still wet, so I decided to add the powder to the frame as well. And so after coating the entire thing, I just uh, flicked the rest of the excess powder off, turned it over, and then here I'm just adding my heat tool. Now I did let my heat tool heat up for about 30 seconds before I applied it to the image. And then this is another one of my favorite parts is once you apply the heat tool to the image, watching it kind of come to life. This is another one of my favorite parts.
effect. I love that shiny black and I really love how the bold colors look on the frame. Now even though I think this looks pretty the way it is, I wanted to bring in one of the colors in the frame. So I colored the inside parts of the flowers with my yellow Copic marker Y08. And then to finish off the card, I'm using these starlight gems in a rainbow of colors. These are from Pink and Main. And I just placed each of the gems around the flowers going in rainbow order. And in, in order to attach them, I'm using my sparkle stick and some art glitter glue with the fine tip. And this finishes off my card. Now, I don't usually do one layer cards. I usually have a lot of layers on my cards. So this was definitely different for me, but I think it turned out really pretty and I'm going to have to make some more of these. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm also curious to know if you like making one layer cards and also tell me where you're from. All of the products that I'm using will be listed in the description box below in case you're interested. So now I also wanted to share a picture of the awesome items in Sierra's giveaway that you can win by watching, subscribing, and commenting on her channel. The link to Sierra's video will be at the top of the description box below, so go check that out now that we're at the end of this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're not already a subscriber, I hope you'll consider subscribing, and don't forget to click the thumbs up. You can also find additional card making inspiration on my Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest accounts, as well as my TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, go look me up at Cards by Kendra. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful crafty day.